Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. Today we are doing Alaska certification training. I appreciate you guys jumping on with me. My name is Marnie Hernandez, and I will be doing, um, we will be doing the certification. We do it as a group, and it's kind of fun to do. Now, if you missed the first part, we already did um, a portion of Alaska last week okay so right here is do, do, do your channel um alaska under my youtube videos okay i i actually put all our training on here so this is my youtube videos okay we have disney world we have cunard we have princess um marriott hawaii all these trainings we did so right here is alaska part one so if you missed it um you can catch up because again you want to get your certification okay there you go so that is the first part okay um so if you want to pull those off of the chat you can um and um no worries john again i'm recording this so if you need to get on later um then you know we'll have it recorded for you okay all right, so let's go in to Alaska. Doo, doo, doo. So today's been kind of busy. I did the, the, the presentation, then I did team building, now we're doing Alaska, and then I have Q&A. So long day. I know it's, it's um, it may be running slow. Is it running slow for you guys? Are you guys in? So it may not just be you, it's, it's I think, the, the program. All right, so I'm in, okay? So once you get in, okay, um, the profile when you register, um, it's pretty easy. I think you just ba put your basic information in there um, and then uh, it'll take you to the courses, okay? very slow yeah so here so i just put in here company name archer travel i put that i'm a travel agent you put the iota number remember guys if you're new keep this number handy you're going to need it all the time okay um also travel leaders the consortia you always want to use that too travel leaders network is the consortia or consortium okay so anytime it asks for that it's always going to be travel leaders okay so once you get in um just let me know and then we'll just go right here to trainings hold on let me go back to home all right so you're going to go down here to training Okay, and they have webinars, meet the team, agent toolkit, and events. So we're going to go to training. So as you see here, there was introduction, interior, southwest region, inside passage. So as you see, there's several um, modules, okay? So we already did the introduction, and we did the interior, okay? So again, that's on that I posted up above um where you can get that for um uh the prior two trainings okay just go in and do the tests and you have the answers right there okay so today we're going to start with southwest region okay um so what we do is we go through and we either read it or there's um or there's videos and stuff. So I usually start and then if it's too much, I go ahead and say, okay, who's next? Who wants to read? Okay, so we we take turns again. This is just a fun little team effort just so we can all get certified because once you get certified, you post your certificate. Hey guys, I'm an Alaskan specialist now. I can book your cruises for you. I can book your land tours. So much great information. Um, yes, Paul, let me go ahead and get this for you. Um, it's right up here. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Right here. Copy. All right. So here's the link. 
make sure you registered very quick to register and then once you're done then you can um go into the training and then catch up with us okay so if somebody wants to go ahead and watch the chat box i'm going to start reading um so we can get through some of these because i think last time we were on for three hours so i can't do it three hours today but we'll get through what we can all right so again welcome everybody i am recording this and we are doing alaska so we're talking about the southwest region few places on earth compare with the wonders of southwest alaska brown bears amble along the hills and plains and more than 240 bird species inhabit the southwest region of alaska the region's terrain ranges from a landscape of volcanoes in katmai national park and preserve to the windswept aleutian islands that make a nearly 1100 mile uh, sweep towards asia this region's vast scenery wildlife world record halibut and salmon and diverse bird life will attract your clients who are interested in getting off the beaten track for in-depth up close encounters with an alaska truly less traveled while very accessible southwest is its own destination not something your clients will experience on their way to other destinations visitors travel to southwest alaska mostly for fishing bear viewing and incredible diversity of bird species geography southwest alaska is just as large as alaska's other regions it is made up of six distinct regions of its own the Kodiak Island Archipelago includes Kodiak, Afognat Islands, as well as varied terrain of mountains, tundra, rocky shoreline, and spruce forest. Now, mind you guys, when I read, okay, yes, I may mispronounce, so it's kind of, you know, difficult on some words, so please forgive me, okay? Uh, the Alaska Peninsula follows the Aleutian Range rising uh, southwest of Anchorage to form the west side of Cook Inlet. It is 550 miles long and includes sea coast, mountains, glaciers, volcanoes, marsh, marshy lowlands, and the largest lakes in Alaska. Beckeroff Lake, um, Iliamna Lake, and Lake Clark. Bristol Bay is an area of freshwater salmon, spawning streams flowing into nearby rivers and bays. While the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta region is a vast wetland broken only by a few low hills, occasional rivers, streams, and lakes. It stretches 200 miles inland and 250 miles north to south. The Aleutian chain is a chain of islands made of submerged mountains beginning more than 20,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. This mountain range runs from the Alaska mainland to more than 1100 miles into the Pacific Ocean, with islands consisting of low rolling hills, stark cliffs, and dormant volcanoes. The uh, Pribilof Islands, St. Paul and St. George are small volcanic islands with tough treeless tundra, sea cliffs, and rocky beaches. History. The in indigenous people of Southwest Alaska have been in the region for at least 8,000 years. Russian traders arrived in Southwest Alaska in the 1740s, searching for fur seals, sea otters, and other valuable animals. The first capital of Russian Alaska was established on Kodiak Island in 1792. At the same time, the first permanent settlement in the Aleutians was founded. In the early 19th century, the Russians moved their Alaska capital from Kodiak to Sitka, leaving behind the Russian Orthodox faith, that faith, which remains a dominant religion in many communities today. During the Nome Gold Rush of 1898 to 1899, Unalaska became a favorite refueling stop for steamers carrying miners north and gold south. Over time, um, I don't know if it's Unalaska or Unalaska, and Kodiak became important commercial fishing bases, a role still important today. Um, during, um, the Aleutians were strategically important during World War II in preventing Japanese invasion of the main, U.S. Main, mainland. 
In the 1940s, the U.S. Navy took over Dutch Harbor, the seaport that serves the town of um, Unalaska, fearing a Japanese attack. The air raid came in 1942. Japanese forces occupied the islands of Atu and Kiska near the western end of the Aleutians. Um, Aleutians, if that's right. Traces of this era are still evident throughout the Aleutian Islands and Kodiak Island regions. Bristol Bay has grown into one of the premier sport fishing destinations in the world, as well as a busy, busy commercial fishing ground. The Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Archipelago have seen a similar increase in tourism. Kodiak has become home to the largest commercial fishing fleet in the world. While Unalaska is home port to the globe's richest fishing fleet in terms of volume and value of product landed. The rest of Southwest remains much as it always has been, remote, untouched, and largely unseen by the rest of the world. Getting around with no overland links to the rest of the state and no roads outside the immediate vicinity of the larger towns, Southwest Alaska is reached by scheduled or chartered air service, usually from Anchorage or Kenai Peninsula. The larger communities of the region have scheduled jet service. Smaller communities have scheduled air taxis. Advanced reservations are essential for the short summer season. The Alaska State Ferry provides year-round service to Kodiak and in the summer months brings service two times a month along the Aleutian Islands. Refer to the Alaska Marine Highway website for up-to-the-date ferry schedules and rates. As an option, visitors can take the ferry one way and fly the other way in order to enjoy the wildlife and remote communities that most visitors never see. Some cruise ships call on Southwest Alaska ports, either on repositioning cruises to the far east or as part of a naturalist cruises traveling between Nome um, and Anchorage. Day cruises and charter boats are available for wildlife and photography excursions. Your clients do need to know that seas can be rougher than in other waterways, even in the relative calm of summer and should plan accordingly. Winter travel is almost exclusively by air. Ice roads formed when the rivers freeze up also provide access between communities via trucks, snow machines, and dog sleds. The climate. When planning your client's trip to Southwest Alaska, you are well advised to include weather days, um, weather days, days on either side of the Southwest expedition, just in case the traveler is weathered in or out of their destination. Be sure to include suggestions for these unplanned days so you can make alternate arrangements for clients in the event the weather days are not needed. Dining. Larger communities have fast food options and a choice of sit-down restaurants, including ethnic eateries, coffee shops and cafes, and very limited fine dining. Smaller communities may have a small grocery or supply store. Visitors should carry snacks and water just in case they are delayed or miss limited store hours. However, encourage your clients to purchase something locally whenever possible. It will give them an opportunity to contribute to the local economy, to interact with locals, and possibly make a new friend. Many wilderness lodges include meals in their pricing. Obtain information about dining options to include with the client's documents through the local visitors, bureaus, and accommodation providers. Specialty or special dietary needs may be met with advance notice. Shopping, almost every town and village has stores or gift counters selling local arts and crafts or souvenirs. Hotels typically have an in-house gift, gift store and usually carry items from local artists. If there are no apparent gift stores or counters, your client should ask locally who has items to sell. Not everyone takes credit cards, so it is also a good idea to have some cash for these types of purchases. Baskets made of local, locally gathered grasses makes 
Eskimo yo-yos, often made of fur, leather, sinew, ivory, and baleen, are some items to look for. When buying from the store, look for the Made in Alaska and Silver Hand program logos. Make sure remember that, that could be a test. Covered in module one, to be sure the items were crafted in Alaska. All right, let's watch a quick little video here. Anybody here been to Alaska? I know I want to, I want to do the cruise. Yeah, I bet. I bet it's beautiful. We have some agents there in Alaska, so we should have them do a little training for us. All right. So next page. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. When is the best time to go? I don't know, but we'll learn. I think we learned on the last one, but I don't remember. Anybody that re that came with us la or did the training last time, when was the best time to go? Wasn't it like May through September or something, I think. Um, all That's right. correct, Marnie. May through uh, September. See, I learned something. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of I the went, questions. I went, <laughs> I went through all the training last night to get caught up for the okay per perfect thank yep. you all right all right so yukon um vancouver juno round trip cruise very nice and very nice we'll have to see pictures all right so the yukon cause okay this is where i start wanting to hand this off <laughs> cusco quim delta region okay all right, a broad wetlands lying between the yukon and cusco quim rivers Yes, is one of the most populated rural areas in Alaska, known locally as the YK. Okay, I can handle that. About 25,000, okay, thank you, Linda. I'm gonna hand it off soon. Um, as the YK, about 25,000 Yupik Eskimo people make their home in this region and depend on natural resources to support an active subs subsistence way of life. Much of the wetlands are part of the 20 million acre, 8 million hectares. Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge, the largest wildlife refuge in the United States. You hear that? Although most noted for waterfowl and other migra migratory bird habitat, the refuge also supports musk ox, caribou, brown and black bears, wolves and moose, Hundreds of miles, kilometers of rivers and streams provide spawning and rearing habitat for 44 species of fish, including all five Pacific salmon species. The Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center is located in Bethel. Okay, remember that. Visitor facilities in this region are limited, but the larger villages and towns of Bethel and Antioch um, have hotels or inns. Local guide services provide air transportation to areas of wildlife refuge. Um, Bethel, the commercial center for the area. Bethel is located at the mouth of Cuscoquim River, 40 miles inland from the Bering Sea, 400 miles west of Anchorage. Originally settled in the 1800s, it was known as Mumtrek 
Galgalmunt, okay? Meaning Smokehouse Village. The first trading post was established in the 1870s. Today, Bethel is the largest bush rural community in Alaska and the transportation center for dozens of native villages in the Yukon Kuzikimikwim Delta. The majority of the population is Alaska native or part native. The traditional Yupik Eskimo practices and language remain predominant in the area. A Yupik trading center in the 1870s, Bethel is still a marketplace for Yupik ivory carvings, baskets, and other craft items. The location, Bethel is located at the mouth of the Cusco Quim River, 40 miles inland from the Bering Sea, lies in the Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge, 400 miles west of Anchorage, access jet service from Anchorage and air taxi service connecting Aniak, Dillingham, St. Mary's and many rural other rural communities. Accommodations and amenities, Several hotels, motels, B, Airbnb, or B&Bs, and cottage. There are several restaurants. Food, mostly conveniences, and supplies are available. Taxi service is also available. Attractions. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Headquarters, Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center. Visitors' information and natural history and wildlife displays illustrating activities available within the Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, Yuktarvik, uh, Bethel's Visitor Center and Museum Annex, a place for people's things. It is part of the University of Alaska Fairbanks Kuskokwim Campus Cultural Center and offers exhibits of traditional native tools and clothing, a collection of vintage photos, native art classes, and a gift shop. Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge. Um, a 20 million AC is the largest wildlife refuge in the United States. The refuge supports one of the most important shorebird nesting areas in terms of both density and species diversity and one of the largest aggregations of water birds in the world. A spectacle takes place every single, oh, <laughs> thanks dear. Um, a spectacle takes place every spring as millions of ducks, geese, and other water birds return to the refuge to nest. The refuge also supports musk, um, mu musk ox, caribou, um, brown and black rivers, thank you, Ed, um, wolves and moose. Hundreds of miles of rivers and streams provide spawning and rearing habitat for 44 species of fish, including all five Pacific salmon species. All right, so good. See, I got people volunteering. I love you guys. All right, so I'll go ahead and hand this over now to Linda and let her read and then Ed will read. So take it away, Linda. Bristol Bay, Bristol Bay region. Bristol Bay is home to the world's largest source of red salmon, also known as sockeye. The salmon are enticed by the area's rich freshwater spawning streams that flow into nearby rivers and bays and support world-renowned spawning and harvesting of all five species of Pacific salmon, king, sockeye, silver, pink, and chum, as well as rainbow trout, arctic char, grayling, northern pike, lake trout, and dolly varden, beluga whale, and orca or killer whale sighting are common as they follow the salmon runs. The area is home to caribou, moose, bear, and walrus, as well as small game such as beaver, porcupine, river otter, fox, and varied waterfowl. Many cultures meet in this land, including Eskimos, Aleuts, Albaths, Albath scans, traditional customs of the regions mixed Alaska indigenous cultures are still evident with local arts and crafts prominent in the regions. Hold on, let's go down a little bit farther. <laughs> Sorry, dog stuck outside. Come out for you. All right. 
Uh, the Bristol's come to a variety of activities, parklands and remote activities. Hang on, where'd you go, Marty? <laughs> curl, curl up again. Hey, my dog was barking. <laughs> my dog is barking. <laughs> I just got home like 10 minutes ago, just before everything started. And I was trying to get it going and she had to go out. I'm sorry, okay, where are we? No, no, no. Give me one second. We were part of the access for you. <laughs> I know, sorry, terrible. Don't worry about it, sorry everybody. My little dachshund is just you know, one of those. She's one of the cool house clothes. Okay, I got her. Many cultures meet in this land, including Eskimos, Aleuts, and Athabascans. Traditional customs of the regions mixed Alaskan indigenous cultures are still evident with local arts and crafts prominent in the region's museums and visitor centers. Visitors come to Bristol Bay year round for a variety of activities. The parklands and remote sites that make up the area are accessed only by float plane or boat. Lodges, outfitters, and local airlines offer guided or unguided adventure opportunities. Visitor facilities are limited in local villages, but the larger villages and towns of Dillingham and Naknek have hotels or inns. Local guide services provide a provide air transportation to remote areas of the region. Dillingham, Alec Neg, yeah, sorry guys, <laughs> Togek National Wildlife Refuge. Togek National Wildlife Refuge includes 4.7 million acres of land encompassing pristine rivers, cool, or excuse me, clear mountain lakes and steep sloped mountains. Salmon and trout fishing, birding, wildlife photography, river rafting, kayaking, and hunting down people to this spectacular area. Excuse me, and hunting draw people to this spectacular area. The rugged Aklan and Wood River Mountains are noteworthy for their scenic beauty. Togak offers some of the finest salmon and trout fishing in Alaska. Access. The refuge has no roads and there are no established trails or campgrounds. Primary access to the refuge is by chartered aircraft or boats out of the communities of Dillingham, Bethel, and King Salmon. All three communities have daily scheduled air service from Anchorage. There is a three-day camping limit on all the rivers throughout Togiak and opportunities exist for guided and independent recreation. Visit the Togat National Wildlife Refuge website for more information and trip planning. Air taxi services and guides with permits for operating in the refuge can create a custom program for your client's visit. Attractions. Cape Pierce, one of only two regularly used land-based haul outs for Pacific walrus in North America. Up to 12,000 male walruses may haul out of the water at one time, or haul out at one time. Endangered stellar sea lions, harbor and spotted seals also use haul outs within the refuge. Walrus Island State Game Sanctuary. A group of seven craggy islands and their adjacent waters located in Northern Bristol Bay, Walrus Island's State Game Sanctuary is world famous for its unique summer concentration of walruses. Best known among the walrus islands is Round Island, where each summer large numbers of male walruses haul out on exposed rocky beaches. Other wildlife on and around the sanctuary include stellar sea lions, harbor seals, orcas, gray humpback and mink whales, red fox and thousands of seabirds. Access to the sanctuary is by float plane out of Dillingham, connecting to an overnight expedition tour boat outside of the community of Togik. Wood Tikchik State Park. Wood Tikchik State Park is the largest state park in the US consisting of 1.6 million acres and named for its two separate systems of large interconnected clear water lakes. Speared peaks, high alpine, va alpine valleys and deep V-shaped arms give the park a spectacular fjord-like appearance on the western boundaries. 
The eastern portion looks out upon islands, gravel beaches, and the expensive tundra of the Nushagwak lowlands on the east. The Wood River Mountains are to the west. Access. Wood Tikchik has no roads. Access is by air charter out of Dillingham with daily commercial air service from Anchorage. Water access is from Dillingham via the Wood River. Several commercial sport fishing lodges are located on private property within the boundaries of the park. These lodges operate on a reservation basis only. The Dillingham Ranger Station has a complete list of commercial operators authorized to conduct business within the park. Very good. So again, when you get <laughs> tired, just let Ed know and he'll take over. Okay, no, I'll do another one for sure. All right, Alaska Peninsula region. Can I get the dog settled down? <laughs> the Alaska Peninsula's rich indigenous history spans more than 5,000 years. The maritime Aleut and Alutik people depend on the sea for much of their food and livelihood. They have always been known for their extreme functional seaworthy kayaks or bird arcs, arcas, and traditionally used them for substance hunting as well as transportation. Their cultures are heavily influenced by the arrival of the Russians in the late, late 1700s and still are today. Russian Orthodox churches are found in about every community and Russian foods and words remain a part of daily life. <clears throat> Access. Today, scheduled air service is available from Anchorage to Lemana, King Salmon or Neck Neck for access to the region's fly-in fishing lodges. Air taxis provide service to all points around the peninsula. Alaska Peninsula National Wildlife Refuge, a 3.5 million acre refuge, the Alaska Peninsula National Wildlife Refuge is known for its fishing, birding and land and sea mammal wildlife viewing opportunities. It is accessible by the Alaska State Ferry via the Gateway Community of Chignac. Cool. <laughs> Do you see the picture the of the? Bears. Did you see the picture of the river down there before we switched everything? No. There was like a, a big Y. It was really cool. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I'll do one more. Alaska Peninsula, Kitmai and oh boy, and uh, Anak Chak. Kitmai National Park and Preserve was established as a national monument in 1918 to preserve the Valley of Ten Thousand Smokes, a 40 mile squared. 100 to 700 feet deep ash flow deposited by the Nova Rupta volcano in 1912. The name was derived from the thousands of small holes and cracks in the ash deposits that gave off gas and steam from heated groundwater. Over the years, protection of the area's brown bears became equally important and Katmai was designated a national park and preserve in 1980. Katmai National Park and Preserve encompasses 4.7 million acres of pristine wilderness on the Alaska Peninsula across from the Kodiak Island. Wild rivers and streams, rugged coastlines, broad green glacial hue valleys, active glaciers, volcanoes, and brown bears characterize Katmai. Katmai contains Algnak Wild River, Anakchuk National Monument and Preserve, a 30 mile squared volcanic Caldra and a very large population of brown bears. 14 active volcanoes lie within the park today and the Alaska Volcano Observatory operates 19 monitoring stations there. I didn't know there was that many volcanoes there. <laughs> Tours are available throughout the Valley of 10,000 Smokes and visitors may also hike the Valley of 10,000 Smokes independently. Your clients should know summer temperatures range from 44 degrees Fahrenheit to 63 degrees Fahrenheit with frequent high winds and rain. Insects can be intense and head nets are recommended. Access, park headquarters located in King Salmon can be reached by commercial airline. 
Brooks Camp, a lodge and campground located approximately 30 miles from King Salmon is the main access point for the park. Brooks Camp is only accessible by small float plane or boat. Bear viewing and flight seeing tours of the park can also be arranged from Kodiak, Homer and Anchorage. Accommodations and amenities. All visitors to Brooks Camp, including lodge guests, day visitors and campers must pay a user fee. The Brooks Camp campground is about one mile from Brooks Fall by trail and there is a per square per person per night fee for camping. Backcountry users are not charged a day use fee. Reservations for both camping and day use must be made prior to your client's visit through the National Parks Reservation Service. For clients wishing to stay at the lodge, reservations can be made a year in advance. Wow, reservations are necessary. Attractions, Alagnak Wild River traverses access traverses across the Alaska Peninsula towards Bristol Bay and the Bering Sea, providing opportunities to experience wild wilderness, wildlife, and cultural heritage of Southwest Alaska. Brooks Camp Visitor Center located in Nanak Lake near the mouth of Brooks River. Brooks River Falls, where the bears and seas and congregate for dining of migrating salmon. Brooks River National Historic Landmark, North America's highest concentration of prehistoric human dwelling, dwellings. King Salmon Visitor Center, located next to the King Salmon Airport Terminal, Valley of 10,000 Smokes, what remained after Novorupta volcano erupted, spewing seven uh, miles tripled of glowing ash and pumice into the air. I don't think that's right, but Antichuk National Monument and Preserve, a 600,000 acre, the Antichuk National Monument and preserve is located inside of Katmai National Park and Preserve, 10 miles east of Port Hayden and 150 miles southwest of King Salmon. Its centerpiece is the six mile wide, 2000 foot deep Anachuk Caldera, which is created by the collapse of a 7000 foot volcano some 3500 years ago. Later volcanic activity built a 2200 2, foot cone Vent Mountain inside the caldera. Anachuk Mountain, Anachuk National Monument was established in 1978 to protect the geologic and volcanic features associated with one of the most spectacular dry calderas in the world. The preserve was established in 1980 with the purpose of maintaining the natural state of the area. The 32 mile Anachuk River is a designated wild river located entirely within the monument and is unique as its headwaters originate in a freshwater lake inside of inside the caldera. The river starts slowly from Surprise Lake and speeds up as it flows through a narrow 1,500 foot high opening in the caldera wall called the Gates. The caldera is scenic featuring 2,000 feet walls, cylinder cones and other volcanic wonders. There are no fees for entrance into the monument However, a backcountry permit and bear proof canisters are required for campers and backpackers. Less than 200 visitors frequent the park each year. Visitors should be prepared for windy conditions, especially through the gates area and often within the caldera as well. The coastal area is often shrouded in fog and rain. Summer temperatures range from the mid 40s to a high of 70. More information on this national monument and other public lands is available through the King Salmon Visitor Center located next to the King Salmon Airport Terminal and through the public lands website. Access, Anachuk is about one and a half hours flying time from King Salmon and about a half an hour flight from Port Hayden. There are daily commercial flights from Anchorage to King Salmon. From there, a number of air taxi charters are available. The park is also accessible by boat from any of the coastal villages. Attractions. Anachuk Caldera was created by the collapse of a 7,000 foot volcano and Anachuk River, a designated wild river located entirely within the monument. Very good. Ooh. All right, Ed, you wanna read? Again, guys, you know, it, it's kind of difficult. So just, you know, if you guys want to volunteer, we're more than happy to have you help. So yes, I'm ready. All right, ready. perfect. Yeah, great. 
Alaska Peninsula, King Salmon and Neck Neck. King Salmon sits on the Neck 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 River, 290 miles southwest of Anchorage. King Salmon is the gateway to Katmai National Park and Preserve and McNeil River State Game Sanctuary, two of the most well-known bear viewing areas in Alaska. Cool. It is also the stopping off point to catch a charter to any of the numerous lakes and rivers, including the Naknek, Iliamna, Betaroff, and Ugashik lakes, where anglers seek all species of salmon and trophy trout. The area contains a complete range of fly-in fishing and adventure camps and lodges. Many day fishing and wildlife viewing charters access the area from Anchorage, Kenai, Saldatna, and Homer. King Salmon is also the jumping off point for adventurers, anglers, and wildlife expeditions headed to Betaroff National Wildlife Refuge and Alaska Peninsula, Na Peninsula National Wildlife Refuge. Location, King Salmon is located on the north bank of the Naknek River on the Alaska Peninsula about 15 miles upriver from Naknek. It is 284 miles southwest of Anchorage. Access, scheduled air service from Anchorage, about one hour by jet. Accommodations and amenities, one hotel, an inn, several local lodges, and a couple of restaurants. There is access to more than 30 fly-in lodges or camps. Attractions. King Salmon Visitor Center, next to the airport terminal, both the National Park Service and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service staff the center. It includes an information and trip planning desk, exhibits, interactive programs, and an audiovisual room featuring wildlife films. There are also educational books containing numerous air-sea navigation charts and topographic maps. Information about air charter services and fishing and hunting guides licensed to operate on public lands can also be obtained at the visitor center. Naknek. Naknek is located on the Naknek River and is con connected by a 15 and a half mile road to King Salmon. Naknek is the seat of the 531 mile squared Bristol Bay Borough one of the largest commercial salmon fishing areas in the world. Due to its strategic location, Naknek supports several salmon processors, which draws several thousand seasonal workers each summer. Location. Naknek is located on the north bank of the Naknek River near its mouth on Bristle Bay. It is 15 and a half miles from King Salmon and 300 miles southwest of Anchorage. Access most passenger and charter service is out of King Salmon, which has daily scheduled service from Anchorage. Accommodations and amenities. There are a few hotels, inns, several B&Bs, and a couple of restaurants. Numerous fishing, hunting, and adventure lodges are located throughout the area. Attractions, Bristol Bay Historical Museum features archaeology, history, and indig indigenous culture. It documents Naknek's history as one of the largest commercial salmon fishing and canning headquarters in the world. The museum building is the original Fisherman's Hall, an early meeting place for fishermen. Displays show the progression from the early subsistence-oriented lifestyle of the first Bristol Bay residents to the coming of the Russian fur traders to the, uh, to the oral histories and family trees of present, re present residences, residents. The Russian Orthodox St. John the Baptist Chapel reportedly constructed in 1886 is on the National Register of Historic Places. I'll read one more, Marnie. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. It's tough, huh? <laughs> you got to concentrate, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Okay, this one's Lake Clark in the Alaska Peninsula. Lake Clark National Park and Preserve is a wilderness of seacoast, mountains, glaciers, and lakes. 
filled with trophy-sized rainbow trout. Lake Clark National Park and Preserve was established to protect the area's scenery, fish, wildlife, and the traditional lifestyles of local residents. To accomplish these goals, the area was named a national monument in 1978. In 1980, it received a wilderness designation and became a national park and preserve. The spectacular scenery stretches from the shores of Cook Inlet across the Chigmet Mountains to the tundra covered hills of the western interior. The Chigmets, where the Alaska and Aleutian Ranges meet, are an awesome jagged array of mountains and glaciers. They include two active volcanoes, Mount Redoubt and Mount Iliama, Iliamna, home to three wild and scenic rivers and numerous lakes, including 40 mile long Lake Clark. The park offers excellent fishing and wildlife viewing. Its many rivers and lakes are critical salmon habitat areas for the Bristol Bay watershed, one of the world's largest salmon fishing grounds. Summer temperatures range between 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 65 degrees Fahrenheit with considerable pre precipitation. Weather condition is in the region can change suddenly and proper equipment such as rain and cool weather gear, extra food and cooking fuel are essential for any backcountry travel. There are no entrance fees on Lake Clark National Park and Preserve and visitors average 4,900 annually. Access to the Lake Clark region is by small aircraft on a one to two hour flight from Anchorage, Kenai or Homer to Port Allsworth on the south shore of Lake, Lake Clark or to private lodges in the area. The park's only maintained trail, the Tenalian Falls Trail, begins in Port Allsworth. Attractions include McNeil River State Game Sanctuary, home to the world's largest concentration of brown bears, also home to various land and sea mammals, bald eagles and waterfowl. This area has no roads, no modern amenities, and is virtually undisturbed by human development. Mount Molchatna, Naknek, Vichak, and Alagnak rivers, all highly productive fishing waters. Wilderness includes the Chig Chigmet Mountains, as described above, three wild and scenic rivers, and numerous lakes, including 40 mile long Lake Clark fishing and wildlife viewing tundra, riparian coastal and forest zones. Um, I can go on or somebody else can take over, Marnie. I'll go ahead and take over. Thank you. Uh -huh. I appreciate it. Again, guys, if you guys want to, oh, Renee, okay, Renee said she will. Okay, go ahead, Renee. Thank okay, you. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Kojak Island, Ooh. Archipelago region. The Kodiak Island Archipelago consists of 16 major islands, including Kojak, Afrognak, Van, and Uganic, as well as numerous smaller islands. It is located 90 miles south of the Kenai Peninsula and the Gulf of Alaska and parallels the Alaska Peninsula for about 177 miles. Kodiak Island, also known as the Emerald Island for its lush green landscape at 3,588 miles squared, it is the largest island of the group and the second largest island in the U.S. The first inhabitants to the island were the seafaring Aliquid people who can trace their history back nearly 8,000 years. Rich marine resources supported their substance lifestyle. There were many coastal villages throughout the islands. Russians arrived in the late 1700s to hunt sea otters and established themselves on Kodiak Island. Today, villages scattered throughout the archipelago offer a glimpse into this history. 
more than 1,000 archaeological sites have been identified and the end, the Altic Heritage Foundation is working to preserve cultural traditions. The Russian Orthodox religion also offers a lasting legacy of Russian influences. Can I move this? I got it, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, the military has left its mark as well. Kodiak was a major staging ground for North Pacific operations during World War II and abandoned bunkers are evident and accessible on Kodiak Island. This has attracted war veterans and many others to visit where they or a family member were stationed during their military service. The Archipelago is home to five state parks and recreation areas, including Afronac Island State Park, public use cabins available, Buskin River State Recreations Area, campsites on river, Fort Akarambi State Park, originally a World War II coastal fortification. It was one of the first secret raid radar installations in Alaska and now a national historical landmark. It shows evidence of the Aleutian campaign, houses the Kodiak Military History Museum in one of the old bunkers, provides a forest setting for picnics and camping adventures, fishing, hiking trails, beaches, and features Military Point, an excellent spot for bird and whale watching in the spring and fall. Pasiak River State Recreation Site, picnicking and camping. Shuyak Island State Park, public use cabins available. The Kojak National Wildlife Refuge covers two thirds of Kojak Island. The 1.8 million acre offers protected habitat, habitat for world famous Kojak brown bears, one of the world's largest carnivorous island mammals. The refuge is one of the most accessible bear viewing areas in the state, but your clients will need to fly or take a boat to the prime bear habitat. If the salmon are in, your clients have a good chance of seeing bears. Ask local tour operators to confirm salmon and bear movement before booking a date. More information can be also be found through public the island's information website. Afronac Island. On Afronac Island, your clients can watch or participate in archeological digs and indigenous sites, view wildlife or enjoy excellent hunting and fishing opportunities. City of Kojak. The city of Kojak is the largest community on Kojak Island. It is the home of the largest fishing fleet in Alaska with more than 2,000 commercial fishing vessels, making it the second largest fishing port in the United States. Between 1792 to 1799, the town of Kojak was the capital of Russian America. Kojak also provides access to the Katamai coast via float plane or boat. Location. The city of Kojak is on the eastern tip of Kojak Island south of Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula in the Gulf of Alaska. It takes 45 minutes by jet from Anchorage. The Archipelago is 252 miles south of Anchorage in the Gulf of Alaska. Access, scheduled jet, scheduled or charter air taxi service and Alaska State Ferry from Homer and Witter. Accommodations and amenities. Kojiak offers hotels, motels, B&Bs, and wilderness lodges. There are many restaurants and food, all conveniences, shops, and most suppliers are that most supplies are available. Attractions. Aliquit Museum and archaeological rep, rep, repository artifacts, artwork, historical display, and gift shop. Baranov Museum, formerly a first storehouse, 
It is oldest Russian built wooden structure. It is the oldest Russian built wooden structure on the US West Coast, featuring adequate and Russian historical displays as well as gift shop, as well as a gift shop. Holy Resurrection Russian Orthodox Church, the oldest Alaska parish open during regular services. Kodiak National Wildlife my wildlife Refuge Headquarters displays films and visitor information. St. Paul Boat Harbor and Shelikoff Waterfront, working waterfront features interpretive inter signs for the commercial fishing industry. Very good. You want to do another one? Sure. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. The Prebolov Islands, St. Paul and St. George Islands region. The Prebolov Islands located off the southwest coast of Alaska and north of Unalaska, Dutch Harbor are, art are actually five islands, two of which are inhabited, St. George and St. Paul. These two islands make up the largest Aleut community in the world. The islands were used at one time by Russian fur traders to harvest the preserved seal pelts. Today, social life is community oriented with many traditional indigenous and Russian customs. The Prevolovs are home to the largest seabird population in the Northern Hemisphere. An estimated 2.5 million seabirds <coughs> nest on the rocky cliffs of St. George. Birders from all over the world flock to the Prevolovs for a chance to see more than 200 species, including puffins, mirrors, auklets, red-legged kikawaks, and many other migrating species. More than 1 million fur seals congregate on the island every summer. There are 14 fur sea rock, rockies, rockeries, on St. Paul with designated viewing areas from where to see them. A resident reindeer herd is also located on St. Paul. A deep water port and fish processing plants are located in both communities. Accommodations are limited, so those wanting to see the Prevolope Island should visit on a guided tour. Location. Both communities are two and a half hours from Anchorage. Access, scheduled airline or charter service from Anchorage, boat or cruise ship. Accommodation and amenities, St. George, one hotel and some B&Bs. There are no restaurants or banking services. Groceries, clothing, hardware, laundromat and health clinic are available. St. Paul, one hotel and some efficiency apartments. There are a couple of restaurants, grocery bars, bike rentals, ground tours, post office and health clinic are available. There are no banking services. Attractions, birds. More than 200 bird species have been identified on the Prebolofs included puffins, ukulets, murrays, rare red-legged, Kikowaits, and many, many more. Russian Orthodox churches. Listed on the National Register for Historic Places, St. George, the Great Martyr Church, is located in St. George Island and was built in 1936. Saints Peter and Paul Orthodox Church, located on St. Paul Island, was built in 1907 to replace the first church which was built in the mid 1800s. Both contain historical artifacts and icons. Wildlife include reindeer, blue fox, and various marine mammals, which add to the wildlife sighting possibilities. Yay, one more. Do you wanna do the last one and then we'll do the sure. test? Okay. Sure. And then Rena, you can read the next group. Aleutians Islands region. Past the tip of the Alaska Peninsula, the Aleutian Islands began their 1,100 mile westward sweep towards Asia. 
These islands are located in one of the world's most beautiful dramatic regions. Most of the windswept islands are wildlife refuge, refugees and are home to immense colonies of birds, whales, fur seals, stellar sea lions, and sea otters. The Aleutians are also known for their concentrations of seabirds, including the rare whiskered auklet, auklet and the ancient miralet. The Anagon and Aleutwik people have inhabited the region since the second ice age some 18,000 years ago. Today, they have preserved their arts and lifestyle in the area's commercial fishing economy. Russian influences began in the 1740s when fur traders came to the islands to secure sea otter pelts. The Russian Orthodox faith remains the dominant region in many communities. The Aleutians were strategically important during World War II in preventing Japanese invasion of the U.S. mainland. Japanese forces occupied the islands of Atu and Kishka in 1942, and traces of this era are still evident throughout the islands. Much like Kojak Island, this area continues to attract many veterans of World War II and those interested in the era. Akushin, a small village on Akushin Island has a population of about a thousand people. Akushin is accessible only by boat or historic Roman goose seaplane. There are no roads in the village. It is crisscrossed by wooden boardwalks and sits at the foot of active Akushin volcano. This is a favored location for adventurous, adventurous hikers who can climb to the crater of the volcano. Local hot springs are also a draw. This village and waters around it team the birds and sea life. Some of the largest halibut in the world have been caught in Aleutian Pass on the wild west side of the island. Location, Akushan Island is, the east, is in the Eastern Aleutians, 35 mile east of Unalaska and 755 miles southwest of Anchorage. Sorry. <laughs> uh -oh. access, <laughs> access twice daily, flights during Dutch Harbor on the Grumman Goose Seaplane. In summer, the state ferry to Tushmina stops about twice monthly. Ac accommodations and amenities, a small hotel, and a bunkhouse style B&B. &B. There is also a cafe. Cold Bay, located on the tip of Alaska Peninsula. Cold Bay prides itself on its rugged wilderness and down to earth lifestyle. Built as a covert US military air base during World War II, Cold Bay features a world-class airport and serves as an air hub for Southwest Alaska. The community offers access to the 417,533 acre Izimbek National Wildlife Refuge, home to feeding and resting grounds for hundreds of thousands of birds. More than 98% <clears throat> excuse me, of the world's black grant arrive here each year, as well as mallards, Canadian geese, rock sandpipers, and dunlins. The waters around the refuge are populated with harbor seal, sea otter, walrus, and stellar sea lion. Wildlife viewing is also popular and includes one of the highest brown bear densities in the world. Location, Cold Bay is located in the Enzymic National Wildlife Refuge at the western end of the Alaska Peninsula, 634 miles southwest of Anchorage and 180 miles northwest of Unalaska. Access, schedule and charter service from Anchorage and local areas, twice a month state ferry service in summer. Accommodations and amenities, one hotel and restaurant. False Pass, a traditional Ugandan community that attracts of avid hikers kayakers and wildlife 
Nados from around the world. Falls Pass is located on an important passageway between the North Pacific Ocean and Bering Sea. Falls Pass is the only surviving Ugandan village in Yukamak and Yukamak Island, the first and largest island in the Aleutian chain. Visitors may see a variety of wildlife here. Day trips include a boat ride to the abandoned village of Mazak Mazakhavi. Many residents are vast in traditional Ugandan practices, so your clients may meet local, may meet a local who can describe the traditional uses for plants and berries found on the island. They may enjoy berry picking, hiking, and fishing for halibut from the ferry dock location. Falls Pass is located on the eastern shore of Yukamak Island on a strait connecting the Pacific Gulf of Alaska to the Bering Sea, 646 miles southwest of Anchorage. Access, scheduled and charter airline from Cold Bay, twice a month state ferry service in summer. Accommodations and amenities, one B&B &B and a bunker house provides room seasonally. A local store has limited food and supplies. King Cove. King Cove is located just across the bay from the community of Cold Bay. King Cove is known for its warm, welcoming residents and breathtaking landscapes. This is the site of one of the largest and oldest salmon canneries. Bears are abundant and wildlife viewing is unparalleled. In the spring and early fall, whales migrated through Belkowski Bay offer visitors an opportunity for the up-close view of these majestic creatures. Location. On the south side of the Alaska Peninsula, on a sand spit, frontiering deer, passage, and deer island, 18 miles southwest of Cold Bay and 625 miles southwest of Anchorage. Access. Scheduled and charter aircraft from Cold Bay or Sand Point. Accommodations and amenities, an inn and a couple of restaurants. Sand Point. Sand Point offers a mix of modern amenities and once in a lifetime experiences. This area is a favorite with hikers, in large part because of its beautiful views and lack of bears. The island is also home to a spectacular population of bird life, including eagles, puffins, por pormanonauts, and kickawaits. A free roaming herd of buffalo was imported to the island years ago. Local boat owners are often available to offer tours around nearby waters to view vast a vast array of marine life. A popular day trip destination is nearby Yunga Island with a rare petrified forest, one of the largest abandoned village in the U Evolutions and the relics of gold mines. Location, Sandpoint is located in Halibut Harbor on Pufoff Island off the Alaskan Peninsula, 570 miles from Anchorage. Access, scheduled air service for, from Anchorage and twice a month state ferry service in summer. Accommodations and amenities, a motel, b and and a few restaurants. Unalaska Port of Dutch Harbor, the largest community in the Unalaskan Illusions Unalaska Port of Dutch Harbor is home to the most productive sea processing port in the U.S. with large processing facilities and ships from countries throughout the world. The fishing fleet of Dutch Harbor holds the distinction of leading the nation in, in quality and value of landed catch. An estimated 706 million pounds of seafood is processed annually valued at more than $207 million. Unalaska on Unalaska Island and its sister town, Dutch Harbor on Amatkak Island are at the confluence of the North Pacific Ocean 
and the Bering Sea. This is one of the richest fisheries in the world. Dutch Harbor is the only national deep water port in the Aleutians and more than 400 vessels call here each year from as many as 14 countries. The two towns lie deep in Unalaska Bay and are connected to each other by 50, by 500 feet, by a 500 feet bridge. Unalaska was the first headquarters for the Russian American company and a cornerstone in the lucrative sea otter fur trade in the 1700s. It was also an important harbor for miners sailing to the golden beaches of Nome. In 1939, the US Navy and Army built installations at one time. The area supported 60,000 servicemen. In 1942, the Japanese opened their Aleutian Islands campaign by bombing Dutch Harbor and occupying Atu and Kishka Islands in the only foreign invasion of US soil during World War II. Besides the history and culture opportunities presented by Unalaska Port of Dutch Harbor, Visitors can enjoy the wild variety of birds as well as marine mammals. Summer, wa summer wildflowers are spectacular. And as one of the richest fisheries in the world, charter fishing opportunities for salmon and halibut are plentiful. Location. The city of Unalaska is on the northern end of Unalaska Island, the, south, the second largest island in the Aleutian chain. The Dutch Harbor totally encompasses Masnak Island, a 500 foot bridge connects the two islands. Unalaska is approximately 800 miles of southwest of Anchorage. Access, scheduled daily air service from Anchorage. Ferry service is provided by the Alaska Marine Highway System twice a month from May through September. Refer to the Alaska Marine Highway System website for up-to-date schedules and fares. Accommodations and amenities. There are a couple of hotels and motels, bunkhouse and B&B and Air, and B &B options, several restaurants, grocery stores, banks with automatic banking machines, gift shops, a public library, swimming pools, community racquetball courts, indoor running track and health clinic are all available. In addition, the largest hotel has convention facilities. Attractions, the Aerological Building Visitor Center, located in, Unalaska, in the Unalaska Airport, is once served as the Central Weather Monitoring Station. Now it is one of the most enact and ar architecturally significant World War II buildings in the Alation Islands. It provides another place to experience the region's military history with World War II exhibits films and reconstruction radio room. Aleutian World War II National Historic Site, <clears throat> excuse me, known as one of the 10 best places in the US to experience World War II history. It recognizes the Ugandan people who lost their homes. The site was designated in 1996 to honor the troops who served there. The Church of the, His of the Holy Ascension first built in 1825, then enlarged in 1894. It is now the oldest Russian built, built church since still standing in the country. The repository of more than 700 Russian Orthodox icons, books and paintings is on the National Register of Historic Places and is one of the most photographed sites in the Aleutians. Henry Swanson, Visitors Center, former home of one of the most popular residents of Unalaska. It contains books, maps, tourist information, and displays. Swanson was a fox farmer and fisherman who grew up in Unalaska as a child, watched ships depart from the harbor for a gold from the for the Nome Gold Rush. Mount Ballyhoo, a one hundred and six. 1,634 foot mountain containing artifacts from the military buildup, including tunnels that allowed gunners to cart ammunition from one side of the mountain to the other. The Ona Alaska Corporation 
owns most of the land and a permit is required to visit. Museum of the Unilations, one of the best collections of Ugandan artifacts in the world. An archeological dig just outside the museum has uncovered more than 100,000 artifacts from layer after layer of a loot village dating, villages dating back 5,500 years. Sitka Spruce Park, National Historical Landmark where six trees planted by Russians in, 19, in 1805 have survived. There is also good hiking in the mostly treeless landscape. Woo, very good. Congratulations. <laughs> Boy, that takes a lot out of you, huh? Yes, it does. I know, it's, it's crazy. So thank you and, and thank you, um, Linda and Ed for reading. Um, Thank you, um, uh, John. He actually is helping us. So let me see if I can open this. Um, so we're going to do the test, but it looks like he had um, he had done the test. So we have the answers, but we're going to try to get through and then we'll see. So um, I just don't know where I have them at. Is this it? No. Okay. All right. So let's see. Otherwise, we'll have an answer. So what attracted the early Russian fur traders to Southwest Alaska in the 1740s? Does anybody know? Oh, well, Marnie, make sure you tell them that the questions are going to probably be uh, Out of order. around. Okay, yeah. Keep in mind, guys, um, just like some of the, oops, sorry, hold on, let me get back. Just like some of the other um, tests and stuff, they try to play games with you, all right? So, um, so if your question isn't the same, it will come up, okay? So just take a note or take a picture and then when it comes up, we will um, get it, okay? So yeah, so um, what attracted, if you don't have this question, you will get it, okay? Most likely. So anybody know? Um, it, it'd be the fur, fur seals. Fur seals, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and try fur seals, submit. That's correct. Thank you very much. Bear viewing is very popular activity in this region and people fly out to different locations to watch them in their natural setting. What are the popular bear viewing areas? All bear of the viewing areas. I'll probably say all of the above. What do you think? I don't know if you can yes, hear it is. all of the above. All of the above, okay. Very good, yes, thank you. Southwest region has some of the best locations for this activity. Although birds can be enjoyed in any location, which of the following location is not a popular birding destination? Not. All of the above. All of the above. That is correct. Very good. The Valley of 10,000 Smokes is located where? 10,000 Smokes. Is that a two? I want to say it's Lake Clark. Let me see. Anybody else? Oops. Lake Clark. Lake Clark. Let's try it. Oops, hold on. I don't know why this isn't working. Okay, Lake Clark. Doo doo. All right, so it's not Lake Clark. Uh, John uh, put John <laughs> put Academy. Did you get it right? I don't know. John put uh Academy. Somebody else put Justin. Justin put that too. Katamai? Yeah, it's Cat. Okay. It's Katmai. I Perfect. just answered it. It was correct. Thank you, Cat guys. Mind. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Walruses can be viewed in this region of Alaska. True? Didn't they show walruses or no? True. Yeah. Yes. True or false? The Japanese did not occupy any part of Alaska during World War II. False. That's false, correct. 
If your guests wanted to fish in this region, Alaska, where could they go? All of the above, because that's what fishing is, Alaska, right? Yes. True or false, Port of Dutch Harbor is the second largest commercial fishing port by catch volume in the US. True or false? False. False? Very good. Continue to lead. Okay. Kodiak was the first Russian capital in Alaska. Is that true? Anybody, anybody? I think it's true. True. Which island, and guys, again, you know, we'll go back and help you, okay? Which island does historic Grumman Goose seaplane fly to from Dutch Harbor? Yikes. Anybody know that one? I can't pronounce it, but I think it's Kis Kiska. Kiska? Oh. That's what I put. Akaton. John says Akaton. There we go. Very good. Ah. Woo, 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 woo. We got 100%. Okay, anybody need the answer on any? We want to make sure you all pass. Everybody good? Pass, pass. Very good. All right, so now we go to the next module. Now, um, I think we're going to uh, do this one for next week because I have to get on a QA. and a um, I don't know if you guys want to cheat and go all the way through real quick because we have the answers, but it's up to you guys and you can read it later. So you guys tell me, because if you look, let's just take a look how many more we have. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. And I know we don't want to cheat, you know, but still it's like, ooh, there's a long one. All yeah, right. Yeah, it looks like there's four more coming up. Yeah. So if we do two here, so if we did this one, then we'd have one, two, three more left to finish next week. You guys want to kind of go through it? It's not cheating. It's working backwards. Exactly. All right. So let's just thumb through real quick, guys. Again, you know, you guys can read this. You know, it's, it's geography, history, getting around. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Marnie, which one are we going for? This is the, um, in, um, the inside passage. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, um, so uh, you can get out, Blanca, and then you can get right back into it under uh, modules. So they have the National Forest, okay? 19 wilderness areas. Ketchikan, we all know about Ketchikan, referred to as the gateway city, totem poles. That's how I remember it, okay? Location on the island, okay? Um, access in Juneau, Sitka, Petersburg, accommodations, hotels, motels. So the attractions, you have Cape Fox, Creek Street, Deer Mountain, Dolly's House Museum, Alaskan Lumberjack, Lots and lots. I like the, the totem pole. I made a totem pole pole before. Um, I think that was in school. All right, let's go to the next one. Southern Inside Passage, Petersburg, which is a little Norway of Alaska, located at the end of Mitkoff Island. Access, major inside passage communities, accommodations, B&Bs, and one hostel. They have museums, Frederick Sound, where you can whale watch, glaciers and narrows, Wrangell location, Wrangell Island, access by jet, 
attractions, observatory, um, community house, glacier viewing, totem park, golf course, Wrangler Museum, location, et cetera. Okay, wildlife, Sitka, black tier, tailed deer, black bear, wolves, moose, eagles, and waterfowl. And fishing, of course, fishing everywhere. Mid inside passage, Juneau, Alaska's capital city, um, nestled between the Mount Juneau and the tide waters of Gastineau Channel. Uh, so you have glacier viewing through Juneau, Juneau, flight scene tours available through helicopters, kayaking. Okay, access to the mainland not accessible by road, only by air and sea. They have gold mines, museums, ski resorts, glacier parks, Orthodox Church, the Douglas City Museum, Juneau Ice Field, Salmon Hatchery, the Glacier, the Visitor Center, and the State Capitol, Forest Center, and the Terror Wilderness. Oops. The Mid Inside Passage, Gustavus National Park, Glacier National Park, location, um, Salmon River, access, jet service, accommodations, preserve, location, etc. ABC Islands, Admir Admiralty, and Mount, whatever, Baranoff, okay, and Pelican, Lush Forest, location. Chica, Chicago Island on Lysinski Inlet. Pelican is dependent on float planes and state ferry, two bars and a grill, one room with rent and a cafe. Accommodations, few lodges and b, &B grocery and dry goods stores and a laundromat and then attraction, hot springs, growth forest and scenery. Right, do, do, do. Glacier Bay National Park. This is beautiful. Um, home to the Huna Tinglets. However, several centuries ago, um, during the last little ice age, glaciers pushed out the bay across the icy strait to the present location. National Park and Preserve with the signing of the Alaska National Interest Lands Conserv Conservation Act in 1980. Most visitors come to the park during their Alaska Inside Passage cruise. The park offers limited permits to cruise lines and only a handful of vessels hold those permits. That's good to know, huh? If your client is interested in a cruise that includes the glacier, be sure to check the itineraries beforehand. Um, so make sure you do that because you want them not to miss it, okay? Uh, kayak around the day boat can also drop off guests um, up bay for kayaking and camping opportunities. All right, and Sitka, Sitka by the Sea, once known as New Archangel, is located on the Bar Baranoff Island and known for a spectacular setting and beautiful scenery. Um, landmark is the Mount Fuji look-alike dormant volcano. Uh, Sitka was the Russian capital, uh, pristine waters, abundant fishing, uh, watchable wildlife and bird um, opportunities, humpback whales, sea otters, etc. cetera, um, access daily jet service, two hours from um, Anchorage via Ju Juno and other um, places, and then attractions, museum, dancers, Russian Bishop's House, Cathedral, Wildlife Refuge, Dancers Museums, Castle Hill, Historic Park, and Cultural City. All right, almost done. Okay, let's go back ba, 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 real quick, sorry. He said that the picture of the building is very important, okay? So pay attention to this, okay? the building here. All right, hint, hint. <laughs> Love the help, all right? All right, and then the Northern Inside Passage, Day Shoe, um, end of the trail, end of the line, uh, located western shore of Lynn Canal, 
access passage accessible by road accommodations hotels lodges campgrounds a lot of activity here restaurants hardware stores and grocery stores indian arts found eagle foundation natural museum preserve um, center for the arts dancers state park city landmark galleries etc skagway is synonymous for the gold rush home of the klondike gold rush national park skagway north of there access accommodations hotels one hostel bed and um, breakfast campgrounds rvs a wide variety of restaurants and attractions uh gold rush cemetery gold rush visitor center historic city white pass trail the railroad and Yucatan is the place where the canoes rest. Once a winter village um, nestled um, in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, access daily jet service, bed and breakfast cabins, and one restaurant, Glacier and Russell Ford, known as Galloping Glacier, um, and known for the glaciers. All right, you guys ready for the test? Make sure you answer them all, all right? Let's do this. The indigenous people of Alaska's inside passage are ding, 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 ding. anybody, anybody? It's actually this one. All right. Do you guys have this same question? If not, it's the it's the indigenous indigenous people of the inside passage are Tinglet, Haida, and Chishimishian. All right, the Tongass National Park Forest is the largest forest in the US. True or false? It's actually true. True. Very good. True or false? Juneau sits on an island. Juneau sits on an island. False. That is false. That's correct. Which inside passage community is known as the salmon capital of the world? Bet you can't catch a can. Bet you can't catch a can. <laughs> is it catch a can? It's catch a can. <laughs> <laughs> Which inside passage community is known as Little Norway? It's a guy's name. Little Norway. Which one do you think it is? Was that Gustavus? Gustavus? No, it's Petersburg. Oh, Petersburg. It was close. You can put up your tent on the Alaska Marine Highway System and sleep under the stars. True or false? Well, it is actually true. I'm yes, kidding. you can put up your tent. So we'll have to go, Christine. True yeah. or false? Juneau is Alaska state capital. Come true. on, you all know that. that. Is true. True. But it is true. All right, three more guys. True or false? All cruise lines sailing through Alaska Inside Passage include the Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve in its itineraries. Didn't we just learn that? It is false. Remember, there's only certain ones that do that. Okay, that's why you got to pay attention when booking, guys, because you don't want them to miss that. Only certain um, itineraries include that, that um, scenery, okay? What inside passage community serves as the gateway or entrance to the Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve? Okay, now it's your turn, Linda. What inside passage community serves as the gateway? It's the other guy now. Is that Gustavus? That's Gustavus. That is very Yay. good. <laughs> Such a noble name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which inside passage community is this building located in? Ta -da -da. Remember? Ooh. I said pay attention. Sit, uh, 
That was Sitka. Sitka, correct. That was a quick, easy one, huh, guys? Gosh, we could almost do another one. <laughs> well, we can. You want to? Well, I don't know if we have the answers. You want to try it anyway? <laughs> we can try it. I still have twenty more minutes. John, did you do South Central? Let's Barney. See. Yes. We, you don't had a long day, don't you think? You want twenty minutes to yourself? <laughs> no, I'd rather get it done. Because next week we, we can focus on the two. Okay, not yet. It only has six. So let's thumb through it real quick. We can do it, guys. Barney, which one is this? This is um, South um, South Central. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So South Central, home to over half of Alaska's population. Playground and activities around the world. Geography, it has everything that Alaska has. As you can see here, mountain ranges, climate and weather, 60 degrees to 40 degrees. Coastal regions can be mild, wet, and sometimes breezy. Fall usually has rainier weather along with color changes. Locals look for termination dust the first snow on the mountains by mid-september snow is often on the ground by the end of october and is a higher elevation elevations there is often um enough accumulation to partake in winter sports winter it's 20 degrees down to negative 10 or lower all right historical background indigenous people have called this region home for 10,000 years western culture Alaska was purchased by Russia in 1867, resulted in the development of South Central Region. In the summer of 1900, prospectors discovered enough copper in Wrangell to warrant construction of the copper mine. Okay, keep that in mind. Kennecott operation employed around 600 people. Oil was reported in the 1800s, but a strike occurring in 1957 fueled industry development and surrounding communities. Gold strike and hope in early 1900s, but was needed for transportation. 1915 Anchorage was a tent city, construction camp of 2000. Access, again, dry fly or cruise, they can travel South Central Alaska. Sounds like it's open for a lot. Ted Stevens Anchorage welcomes visitors from all around the world daily. Okay, so it's open to pretty much the public. Um, busiest float cruise ships visit South Central through Seward or Whittier as their ports, transferring passengers to and from Anchorage. Passengers can arrive directly by train also. The railroad is also used by independent contractors. All right, accommodations, pretty much everything, hotels, RVs, B&Bs, dining, many locally owned restaurants, et cetera, available tour excursions, entertainment, live entertainment. So this looks like a pretty um, uh, crazy town. No, <laughs> lots going on, all right? Shopping, Lively. Of course, lots of shops, wild berry products, native um, crafts, syrups, what to pack, okay? Again, you don't know, so you dress in layers, okay? We're gonna skip the video. All right, surrounding areas, Anchorage is between um, the National Forest, city itself is alive and um, well, okay? Flourishing year round. Um, downtown's pedestrian friendly walking maps are available. Um, Anchorage is located in the South Central region, okay? During peak Anchorage welcomes 150 domestic and international flights. Um, you have the Heritage Museum, Botanical Garden, the Mint, the Heritage, all museums, a zoo, um, the parks, uh, float plain trails, Eagle River looks like it's a scenic um, for summer and winter activities, Alukna uh, Village, not open to visitors at the same exit. Okay. And then Gudar, year round destination access. Okay. And then you have the ski resort, the creek mine, hiking trails, attractions, et cetera, and the national forest, a big, big drawer. Okay. Cooper, Copper River Valley and Wrangell, St. Louis National Park. Okay. 
um, 13 million acres located in northwest of Anchorage, okay? Copper River Valley has been home to indigenous people in the area, the Atna for generations. They speak Athabascan language, okay? So Copper River has Atna. Because their area is a road system, your clients who choose to drive will visit the Copper River as they're traveling through Fairbanks. Um, visitors come to Copper Valley for the spectacular scenery and activity. Many have heard the tasty Copper River Reds, which is the salmon that come from the area. Rivers, glaciers, mountains play a big part to Copper Valley. In addition, on the way, they located towns today, variety of regions. Old mining town Chitna, um, gateway to Wrangell. Okay, Chitna is the old mining town located off the highway. It has a convenience store, hotel, camping, saloon, liquor store, Copper Center um, on the highway. It is home to the ranger station and visitor information. Attractions is the lodge, Gakana, um, located by the highway. Small in size is big on history. Gakana is um, began as a wood and fish camp for the Atna people. Okay, location um, Anchorage, Fairbanks. Okay, small variety of accommodations, several restaurants, and roadside services. And then you have Glen Allen, um, Gateway to Wrangell, community um, off the highway. And then you have McCarthy and Kennecott. Uh, the town of Kennecott was built by Kennecott Copper Corporation, richest mine in the world, okay? Kennecott, Kennecott is the richest mine in the world. Misspelling, mine was shut down 1938 due to economic conditions. The Red Mill buildings perched on the side of the mountain were locked up and left there. Um, National Park has restored part of the 14-story mill building. Uh, small quaint town, rustic feel, backpackers, trekkers, and mountain bikers, as well as visitors, flight, day trips. Uh, location of Chichina, um, accommodations, all the above. So you have the mill, the center, the museum, and then of course the national park, um, 13 million acres, okay? Nearest airport is Anchorage, five hour drive on the highway accommodations, public use cabins are available with Fly-In Lodge. Okay, Kenai Peninsula, often referred to as Alaska's play playground. Some of the most accessible wilderness activities and attractions, you have Anchor Point, um, Ninilchik, uh, Colorful Fishing Fleet, Orthodox Church, Copper Landing, um, gem of Kenai Peninsula, many visitors and accommodations available in the community. Homer, Halibut Fishing Capital. Um, so Homer's home to the fishing capital. Remember it that way, I guess. Homer is located in Kachamak Bay. Wide variety of lodging restaurants and shops, attractions, the ocean visitors, art galleries, Bishop's Beach, Alaska Coastal Studies, Fox River Habitat and Sanctuary, Cove, et cetera. Hope is the first community heading south. Gold Rush buildings still line the main streets. Kenai situated in a low rise overlooking the mouth of the river when it empties into Cook Inlet. Kenai River is a lifeblood peninsula and it runs right through Kenai. Okay, accommodations, and then you have the Orthodox Church, the Visitor Center, the River, and the Kenai Fords National Park. All right, Seldovia, Sewer, Gateways to the Park, Location, Sea Life Center, I'd love to go there, Exit Glacier, the Park, Resurrection Bay, Soldotna, Kenai Peninsula, Anchorage, and the visitor center. All right. Matanuska and Susitna River Valleys. 
located um, locally as Matsu, large as the state of West Virginia and bordered by Anchorage, Copper Valley and Denali National Park, jumping off point for visitors flight scene. Area was originally settled by families who came from the Midwest. Hatcher Pass and Independ Independence Mine State Historic Park are located on the 50 mile scenic Hatcher Pass Loop. Um, Matanuska Glacier located off the highway is accessible by highway. Um, home of the state, Alaska State Park is at Palmer in the palm of your hand, okay? Um, summer's busy season, thank you. Small but very um, vital agricultural region is the lower Mantanuska, wide and flat with rich soil. So remember that the farming area, large vegetables are shown off the, um, along with more of the state fair there. Okay, so Palmer um, and Mantanuska is the um, agricultural area. Okay, and then you have the gift shop, the reindeer farm, Talakanitha off the highway, accommodations, ranger center, Trapper Creek, uh, the 59ers group of settlers from De Detroit, Michigan moved to Trapper Creek to find homesteads. They lived in trailers. Trapper Creek, so remember Trappers, say the people from, um, what was it, Ohio? All right, ah, 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 one more. Michigan. Prince William Sound encompasses 10,000 water. The communities of Whittier access the road. Um, one of the most famous attractions is the Columbia Glacier four miles wide and 200 feet of, at its base, largest glacier in Alaska. Cordova is a fishing town located between Orca Inlet and Lake Ayak, um, located the Princess Sound, scheduled daily jet service from Anchorage and Seattle via Juneau, state ferry, charter aircraft service also available. Restaurants, hotels, Copper River, Delt, um, the museums, cultural centers, the Million Dollar Bridge, bridge is inaccessible today due to road erosion. The Forest Ranger Valdez situated at the end of the highway. Klondike Gold Rush started during the Klondike Road um, Gold Rush. Valdez is known as Little Switzerland. Valdez, Little Switzerland. Okay, so remember that. Gateway to the ecosystem, ecosystem, rainforest and stuff. And North Shore, the Glacier, Prince Sound, River Rafting, Boat Harbor, Valdez, Historical Archive, Whittier, Passage Canal, location and rookery premium sound and attraction. All right, let's do this guys. Can we do it? The Alaska Railroad is headquartered in Anchorage and serves which communities? First one. Very good. Seward, Whittier, good. The, the, all of the above. No. <laughs> The Alaska State Fair is held annually in Palm and showcases unique grown vegetables and local crafts. True. I knew that one. The largest national park in the United States is located in Alaska and is a whopping 13 million acres. Is that the Wrangell? Which one was it? Wrangell. Okay, thank you. Yep. Which region of South Central Alaska is known as Alaska's playground? Is that, which one was that? Was that Kenai? Which one was the playground? Do you guys remember? Kenai Peninsula. Yay! What are the two main cruise ship ports in South Central Alaska? All right. The, the cruise ship ports. Isn't that Stewart Stewart and Whittier? Whittier? That's what I thought. Yep. Yeah. Yay. 
We're doing good, guys. Alaska is home to the famous Bitatarad, the trail sled dog race, the longest dog sled race on earth. What is the approximate distance? <laughs> 100 miles. <laughs> I can't remember if it's a thousand. 800 miles, 500. No, a thousand, maybe 1100. <laughs> I can't remember. It's, it's a what? It's a it's thousand. thousand. Okay. Thousand. Yeah. Thousand. That, that's the the Iditarod is what okay. it is. In what community is Alaska's largest ski resort, Alaska, located? Largest ski resort in Alaska. Google is your best friend. <laughs> what is the largest ski resort in Alaska? Um, Girdwood. Gird Girdwood. Gird Girdwood. <laughs> in what community is Alaska's largest ski? Oh, we just did that. Sorry. It's good bird work. This photo is a ceremonial start of the Iditarod trail sled dog race held every year in Alaska. Can you name the city, Linda? <laughs> no, I can't remember. <laughs> I, I want to say it, Anchorage. That's what I was thinking too. Okay, let's try it. Um. Let's try Anchorage. Yes, you guys yes. are right. Okay. You guys are doing great. In what community can clients visit in this former copper mine and walk through some of Alaska's early mining history? Wasn't that Hope? I thought that was Kennecott. I thought it was Kennecott oh, too. Let's try it. Yeah, that's probably Kennecott. It's Kennecott. Okay. you guys got them did you guys get them yes all yeah. right can't believe we nailed that uh, thank you guys okay you guys can always go back and read them guys you guys can also you know um there's all kinds of things in here that you can print out and everything but i only have one more week assigned to to alaska so we can finish the other two next week so congratulations, you're almost done. So um, again, I appreciate you guys joining me. Um, are we able to print our certificates yet? Or I don't remember. Um, let's see my profile, my certificates. Let's check and see. So I got a couple on here already. So yeah, make sure you guys print your certificates out and post them, okay? Congratulations, I'm excited for you. Also, Ashley, congratulations on getting your calendar done. Um, she won $50 today, so um, she was the first one who posted her, her calendar with the trainings this month. So guys, stay plugged in. Um, we're doing, uh, what are we doing? Britain this um, Friday. Um, don't forget about Viator training on Thursday. We have um, Virgin Voyages training on Friday. Britain the next two Fridays. And then we're going to do Australia. So, Ooh, Marnie, Marnie, uh -huh. it's, it's Ed. How did you get to the uh, printing the certificates? Go to, um, go to your profile. Go to home. And then you can go to my profile. Yeah. And then you have my profile, my scores, and my certificates. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. I only, I only have two. I know. I only have two, too. So probably when we finish another one or maybe if it resets. Um, so, again, congratulations, everybody. Um, the certificate's kind of cool. Look. Oh, it'll open when it's completed. But it's pretty professional. Look at that. So let everybody know so they'll get jealous on you, you know? 
um, hey, what do you mean? You know, so Ashley, send me your cash app, your PayPal, your Zelle, so I can send you the money. Also, I want you to post, hey, thank you, Marvin. No. <laughs> 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 all right so congratulations everybody if you want to stay on i'm going to be on for another hour just doing a q a if you guys want to go over anything any training um i i um you know i switched our wednesdays to mondays uh because um one of the other leaders always has some um, uh um vendors do a a special and this past wednesday they gave away, they did Mexico and gave away like four free trips. So I didn't want you guys missing out on that just to do like a certificate with me. So I changed it to Monday. So now um, third Wednesdays, if you guys are still around, you guys can do those four o'clock. So we usually post them in the morning to let you know what training they're going to do because we don't get a heads up on it. All right. But um, that's why we switched to Mondays. So um, also uh, St. Lucia, we couldn't kind of, couldn't get into that. So um, I may do something else, but um, Courtney volunteered, Courtney Malpass, she's doing Sundays for makeup. Okay. She just did Marriott. Um, she's going to finish Marriott or try to on this next Sunday. Then she's the next three Sundays, she's going to work on Cunard and Princess because you know, we have to finish those. And I didn't want to take up you know, I wanted people, especially new people coming on. I wanted them to, to get some of this new stuff. Um, we're doing AM resorts on the 16th. That one should be good because they give a lot of great perks. Okay. And then um, we'll finish up uh, Hawaii and I'll fin find another one for the 23rd. And then um, let me just show you, which some of you may have already done. Um, oh no, it's OTT, huh? OTT. Um, Christine and I did this the other day because you had to have it done by the first. It took us what five minutes? <laughs> yeah, we yeah we did. We just went and did the test. Yeah, right here, print prizes. Um, so uh, they have little um, different events. So here it was just a three thing test that we did. Um, you had to have it done by August first. But we're gonna do all these other ones too. Um, they're probably you know here. Uh, win for a hundred dollar visa card. So this is what we're going to do on the 30th. Unless you guys get it done before, then um, we'll figure something else out. But I thought that would be kind of fun to do that. Um, and then I'm waiting for um, Travel Academy to pop up um, with some new ones because we pretty much hit a lot of these. Um, they revised uh, Panama. We may want to do that. But um, let's see if they have any of the new ones up. Um, newest courses. So we've already done those. Uh, we did this and this. Sunny Isles. I don't, we didn't do Miami. Um, but yeah, these are kind of fun. I don't know what this is. What is this? You at top. So anyway, um, we're still looking on more things, trying to figure it out. So if you guys have any trainings you want us to do, let me know. Um, but otherwise, again, thank you guys uh, for everything. And again, we do these, um, you know, as a team, as a group. Uh, so again, I'm here for another hour. If anybody wants to go over any trainings, any um, how to post, how to do a QR code, how to do a, um, the profit agility. Did you guys see this? Daily commissions, guys. Um, Check these out. I've been posting them or, or at least bringing them up in trainings. Anybody want to go to Vegas, make $400 commission? Anybody want to go to um, Branson, you can make a $1,000 commission. Um, Lake Tahoe, $400 commission. We got some great deals here, guys. But they have to split that, that Branson with us, huh, Marty? <laughs> It looks like that other one's gone, is it? Let's look and see. There was one in here that was um, uh, $6,000. You got it for Missouri. Let me pull it up. It was crazy. I posted it. Right here. You can make $2,400. 2400 <laughs> So, um, 
guys, profit agility, go in and post these. This one's not a good one, but, um, but some of these are pretty good. 460 in commission, $2,400 you can make in commission, guys. I haven't gotten any bites. Have you, Christine? No. So what I did, um, I copied Christine and I put both of them on there. So I just put it right here on my Facebook page. Let me just show you how we did it. Do, to do. Right here. Get away with friends, five bedroom located in the heart of the Ozark Mountains, sleeps 12. $14.99 for the week, regularly $3,000. This one's $3,000 for the week, originally $7,000, guys. Look at that. And then you just throw pictures in of the resort. Look at that. Five bedrooms, sleeps 12. Get family reunions up there. Wedding parties, girls' night out. That's all you have to do. Yep, it was right there on uh, Profit Agility. You, you know, you put here, you want to put this stuff like when you're posting things because that way they can't give you crap. You're a legit travel agency, okay? So list the beds, online amenities. So what'd we get? We only got, you know, people liking it. I didn't, don't have any messages yet, but, but yeah, post them on, you know, go into brands and then post them there, post them on a Craigslist ad. It's right there, guys. Make sure to take advantage of these things. Also Vegas, that was a good deal with Vegas. Who doesn't want to come to Vegas? Right here, um, Nevada, Vegas. Let's look at these. $400, $400, they have a lot. $500, Tahiti Village, that's a cool one. September 11th, sleeps eight people, guys. Regularly almost $1,750, you get it for $700. You can book put a, an extra $473 for commissions. This is how you put money in your pocket today, guys, okay? And there's training on it. Let me show you the training on how to... Do it. Um, uh, daily. No, it would be mock bookings, right? So this is how you advertise it. Um, so profit agility right here. I'll just put all these in so you guys can use them. There's all different uh, programs that you guys can do these mock bookings on. Um, I would save those and watch them if you can, okay? Um, and then in my YouTube channel, I have um, some, the daily commissions on how you, how you do the invoices, okay? So videos. Um, where is it? Team building. Where's the one I just did? Hold on. Let me see. Search. Sort by newest. I don't know where the one went. Okay. Um, she did one. Carmen just did one for me. I don't know where it's at. Hold on. Not my brother-in-law, it's my brother. He is being kept in ICU. He says he's okay. He says he's okay. I don't know what happened to it. Um, I put it, I think, like private. Oh, this poor doggy. Um, Vax training. Does anybody know um, on my channel, I actually put it as um, instead of open. It should be on here, though, shouldn't it? get serious they have athletes and it's called the shop it's on hbo and i don't know where it's at 
let me see, because I posted it in one of my groups. So let me see if I can find it. Actually, I've got it right here. She's really good at making daily commissions. So if you guys want to learn how to do it. Is it the one with Amy? No, it's with Carmen. Oh, Carmen. Okay. What's her name again, Marnie? It's Carmen what? Um, her name is Carmen Rosario. But I put it as Carmen. Here it is. And I saved it, but I saved it. So I, I saved it and I downloaded it this morning. Anyway, I'll put it back on here. Um, but see, usually I post them as open, available, and hers I put as like private to where I have to share the link because I didn't know if she wanted it um, out to everybody. Um, but then she said it was okay. So Tamara, what question did you have about cruising? Hi, Marnie. Thanks for taking Hi. my call. Of course. Actually, my name is Tamara. Tamara, that's it. That's it. I'm sorry, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that last time. Hi. <laughs> Um, my question is, since I'm so new, you know, I'm only a week old, should I just concentrate on one, um, on one thing like cruising? Because everything seems overwhelming with all of the meetings and classes and everything that I need to learn. So I thought, with cruises, at least, you know, that's bring, that'll bring money in my pocket and I could just focus on one thing. What is your opinion on that? Um, well, if you're going to, yes, I would say cruises. And the reason is, is because with cruises, you get paid usually prior to them traveling. Um, plus cruises are pretty much the easiest, you know, because everything's included. And then you can add the excursions. You can you know, add the airfare, you can add, you know, bring them in a few days early, get them the hotel and everything too. So still you'll be getting access and training on that. Um, but, you know, again, your focus will be the cruise. And the fun part about the cruise line also is you can just call them up, um, go CCL, just make sure you get registered with each of them. But you can go, you know, and call them, call up Carnival um, and say, you know, I have a client, I'm new, I'm just starting out, you know, how would I do this? And they would look it up for you. They would even send you the itinerary and you're still going to get the full commission. Okay. Um, Otherwise, so, I'd be calling you up every five minutes. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, that's fine, too. Um, again, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's not pretty because you're going to, you know play around with it and stuff, but you would just go here to booking, um, uh, create a booking individual stateroom, like I've done it for my family, okay? Um, are they military? Inner line is for you. If you're a travel agent, you guys can put an inner line and you can get an, a, a cheap rate, but sometimes the inner line rate ends up being about the same as what the special's running, but the special, then you also get $50 onboard credit and stuff. So why would I want to go with just the interline rate when I can go with the full booking, get my full 80% commission and get a $50 credit? So you want to compare, especially for yourself. That's This is for agents only, okay, if you're booking for yourself. Now, if you're not, if you're booking for a guest, okay, are you military? Are you a senior? Now, let me show you really quick in our, um, we have these checklists that we have um, that will help you, okay? So um, I have it under here in our Beach Bosses group. So here, cruise, uh, right here, cruise item inquiry. So this right here is questions to help you ask for cruises. So what dates would you like to go? Where would you like to cruise from? What port would you like to go from? What is the occasion? 
Have you ever cruised before? Because again, you'll want to know because if they have, then they usually don't have a number, okay? Um, what cruise line did you go on? So, you know, that's again good because if they went on Carnival, then you can look that up. What did you like or dislike? Did you Do you need pre or post night hotel? Again, that's where you can now add to the value of their trip so they don't rush in because what happens if they get stuck in traffic or their planes delayed? So when you're booking cruises, you always probably want to give them a day or two ahead um, just in case, okay? okay? Will you need a flight? Will you need transportation? What airport are you departing from? Would you like to have any shore excursions? Again, a lot of times you can make um, commissions on that. Sometimes they may already have their cruise booked, but you can go in and book shore excursions on a separate um, you know, link or whatever um, vendor and make commission, okay? Are there special circumstances, wheelchair? Do you prone to sickness? And again, these are just samples. You don't have to ask them all, but it's a good idea. Are your passports up to date? Because a lot of ones, if it's, if, if it's due to expire, like within six months and they're going on an over the you know, European cruise or something, a lot of them won't let them. They have to have, you know, at least, you know, like they're a, 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 mo a most valid um, passport. Um, so you got to check that. Um, best time to contact you travel insurance now whenever I do a quote guys and I don't know if you guys are the same but whenever I do a quote I add the insurance on the quote then if they want to take it off you know you have it in writing please take it off or whatever because then at least if something happens you have it that look on the original quote that I gave you I had it on there for you you know they can't come back at you and then a follow-up date, okay? So we have this for cruise and then we have it for land inquiry. So then you just go here, all right? So yes, they are military, they're over 55. They're coming, we'll just pretend it's me. I'm coming from Nevada. Yes, I have a number, let me look and see. What's my number? April 26th, 1965. So you can look this up because you already have their name and their, their um, birth date, I think, or most of the time when you're doing it, if not, you ask them. Um, but then it looks up because um, a lot of times, so there I am, um, my state, Nevada, I think it's going to pull up though for, um, where am I? State of residency. I think it ends up pulling up for um, California because I think when I did it, I was... Uh, living in California. So when it pops up, it probably will do that. All right, so there I am. Oh, it should fix it. Okay, so I'm red level. So there, it pops that up. Now I can view my offers. So these are different specials. Cheers to you, paradise. So I don't know if you saw the thing, but um, uh, we ended up um, as agents, they were giving away those $29 cruises and stuff. So you have these offer codes you have to use. So you can go in and see. So like with me, these are the current offers that I have. Invitation only, summer savings, summer savings exclusive, Australia savings, book dates, travel dates, and then future cruise benefits. I don't have any yet because I haven't done any um trainings or bookings um in a while okay do they do they still have those 29 dollars? no it was like a 24-hour thing but um, that's why you want to register guys if you want to do cruises guys register register with every cruise line now because i didn't i was working full-time and i didn't register and what happened was Norwegian came by because you guys can go on cruise inspections. Um, they have a lot of uh, Carnival has a lot of like WADA parties um, where you go and they have cocktails and hors d'oeuvres and then they give away cruises. It's like a, just a little cocktail party. Um, but you get invited to all these things and the specials and stuff. But Norwegian had a cruise that they moved the ship, the joy over from the European side of the West Coast, 
and invited agents to come get the ship ready for the next day sailing because they want to make sure everybody was everything was in working order their staff was ready you know to work with people on the west coast you know and um so they invited a bunch of agents hey come have an overnight stay on our ship with us Com completely cl complimentary um we um I didn't get an invite because I didn't register with Norwegian. Okay. Um, luckily, Eileen did. Her husband couldn't go. So she invited me to go. And we went on this cruise ship. We got a balcony room. They gave us a Yeti, you know, those Yetis, the cups. Um, we had one of those, with, you know, on our bed for us. Um, we got steak, lobster, scallops. The, the cruise ship had an, um, a go-karts on it and stuff these are um some of the pictures and if i if if eileen wouldn't have invited me i never would have got to go so you know that's what i'm saying make sure you guys register for these cruise lines because they're always going to be running specials there we are with our our caps on and here's the cruise ship what it did was it sailed from long beach over to ensenada and back we couldn't get off the ship and and again we were fine with that um we were having cocktails just enjoying ourselves it was an amazing opportunity and again i wasn't invited so you got to make sure stay plugged in especially if you love cruise ships okay um so okay so there's now I think so now I'm going to go in and search. Um, could you drop the cruise inquiry in the chat? Yes, yes, of course. So let me go ahead and do that. And I also have a land inquiry too. So you guys can keep that too. So let me put that in here. Marnie, one other question. Are we allowed to join your Facebook group? I don't think I'm a part of that. Um, who's who who introduced you? Molly Shaw, um, Maggie Shaw. You're my direct upline. I'm your direct. Not direct. You're, you're. If you're in, upline. if you're in Beach Bosses, if you're within my Beach Bosses, then yeah, you can join my, you know, because, you know, this is my team's group or whatever. So, so yeah, of course. Um, and Thank I don't you. know if, let me see if I have you or if I can add you. What is it? What's your last name? Wood? word it's word w-o-r-d and then magalati i know it's a mouthful <laughs> let's see yeah i go are we friends i don't think so okay. that's why i was asking yeah go ahead and add me and then um and then you can uh you can i'll get you added okay okay thank um, you you're welcome. yeah you've been texting me but we haven't been communicating on facebook okay all right so here's the land inquiry one pretty much the same thing um but again it's asking about beds and stuff because that's important and i don't know if you guys have done it but um there's the um the hotel one um because King beds are usually more expensive than like two queens or two doubles. Um, so you got to pay attention to that when you're doing your bookings. You can't just automatically look at a, a, a booking and then say, oh, OK, it's either this or that. Because when you go into the actual room, you'll see, OK, if it's a king bed or it's a garden view, then they're going to tack on more money. OK. Um, all right, Darius. No, she's not. I'm sorry. You guys are under World Explorers, um, which is Courtney's, but they have an amazing group also. Um, but you can learn from me anytime. Okay. <laughs> All right. So right here, um, I'm just kind of showing you really quick to book a cruise. Um, like I said, you can call anytime, but you can go in here now and apply filters. Okay. So you want to go Let's say um, I want to go to, where do I want to go? I want to go to Ensenada in September, okay? So I'm going to, where's my filters? Come on, Interline, Nevada, sale date range. All right, so let's go ahead and do October. 
Okay, apply filters. All right, filters. I want to do more. Okay, so sale to, let me go ahead. I'm going to reset filters. Sorry. Come on. All right, so you can go in here. Let's just pick October. Sale to, I want to go to Mexico. The ship. Panorama. Let's do the panorama. And I don't know when I want to go. Okay, so duration. I'm open to that. So now what it does is it'll pull up um, five uh, sailings. Okay, earliest departure. Do I want the price? Lowest price is what I want. Okay. And then so here it tells you from Los Angeles, the Carnival Panorama, seven day Mexican cruise. And then you have interior room, ocean view, balcony, and then the suites. So you want to look and see. So if you had somebody that says, oh, I want to go on a seven day cruise. All right. You know, we've got this one. Now, what if they wanted to go on a three day cruise? So then you're going to have to probably change the ship. Let's do the miracle and see what that one pulls up. Okay, so that one does pull up different ones, as you see here. It's got a four day, it's got a three day. So more variety here for people that are on a budget and stuff. Um, so then you just pull it up and then it tells you, you know, the itinerary and stuff. So like I said, a lot of times, you know, like us, um, like my niece got a cruise and she decided to leave the same day and she got stuck in traffic and missed the cruise okay that's why you want to bring people in probably the day before unless they're located there in the city or close to the departure city okay um but you know you want to check and like different um packages or whatever that they have uh so let's see this one so now this is the sailing so now you have fun select which includes two category upgrades. Um, upgrades does not apply to suite. So they, if they can't upgrade their suite, super saver. Okay, some of these super savers are really good. Pack and go fully refundable. So as you see, it's the cheapest, but it's non-refundable, okay? Uh, so this one, last minute specials, full payment is required at time of booking, stateroom, um, guests select the stateroom. Okay, sometimes it's based on what you know they select for you. Um, guests who select interior may be assigned up or lower accommodation bookings can uh, made as a part of a group must buy up their amenities. So as you see here, each thing is different. August saving sales. What does this include? Okay. Um, category exclusions, super savers are usually re really good. And a lot of them usually give like $50, you know, room credit and stuff. So this is kind of fun because you get to go in and learn the different things like here, right here. Early saver, non-refundable reduced deposit, okay? Celebration Mardi Gras, $99 per person, um, 10 plus day, uh, I don't know what that stands for. $50 per person fee assessed for final payment. Okay. Um, guest reprice of lower booking, assume TC. So like things like this, I'm like, I don't know what this is talking about. Okay. So this is one where you want to probably call and um, ask them, what does all this mean? Okay. Um, but you also can go here. Okay, well, what's the difference between this one and this one? Let's go ahead and compare, you know? And then let's see. So compare two and three. And so it'll pull up showing the difference and stuff. And then you can go in and look. So again, I haven't done a lot of, like I'm just now doing a group cruise, okay? So I've learned, you know, as you go up higher in the category, they've got better rooms, okay? So this 8N has an um, extended balcony versus a balcony down here, um, which is 349, this one's 456. So for $110 more, they're both balconies, but this one has an extended balcony. So the higher in number or letter, the better view you're getting, the better package you're getting. 
Um, so like right now I'm doing a group cruise for our team, okay? Um, which all of you guys are included because I opened it up to rising tide. Um, but now it's like, okay, the first people that reserved, excuse me, their balcony, when I put the price out there, I put it out there at this price, you know, whatever the top price was. So as I start booking these, you know, Sandy may, as Sandra may have booked a balcony also, but by the time I get down her reservation, she may only be paying three fifty nine versus four fifty six. So she, you know, is saving a hundred bucks. She's still getting a balcony room, but you know, again, it's like first come, you know, first served or whatever is kind of how I'm doing it. But then again, you know, depending on who I like, I may put you. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. So like I said, the, the cruises are a lot of fun once you start booking them and stuff. But as I said, you can actually call them up and um, and ask them, um, you know, what these different ones mean or how you, they can compare and stuff. Uh, let's just check the inner line rate just to see, because like I said, um, sometimes let me see if I can get back to that one. OK, so now I'm going to click the inner line rate. And then I'm going to put um, my filter. Again, I want to go October. I want to go to Mexico. And I'm going to leave the ship blank because I want to see what's available. Okay. So since I'm, that's my daughter's birthday. So let me check this one. Look at that $184 for a four night cruise. Um, so the fun saver 509 cheers cheers okay tariff rate I don't know what that means. 229 invitation only military offer non refundable Wi Fi. I don't see the inner line rate. You guys see an inner line rate, they may not have it available because they may be sold out. Let me check a different one. What's it doing? Do, 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 do. I don't know. Inner line is not checked off. Oh, I didn't I click it. Okay, thank you. I thought I had it clicked. Thank you. All right, let's try it again. Sail to Mexico. All right, so that's all I want. All right. Five filters. All right, inner line, fun jet, fun jet, exclusive, inner line here. Okay. So see, like some of them, 347. Okay. This is exclusive travel advisor offer. This may be one of those ones that we were looking at. They're not the $29 one, but still $270. That's a pretty good, good package right here. Okay, so I want to compare that one, the inner line rate and a military offer. Let's look at that. Invitation only. All right, so let's see. Let's compare and see how these are. Let's do balcony. All right, no upgrades apply, no upgrades apply, okay. 1150 so exclusive travel offer so this one's the best one okay so then you look this is it's in the back of the ship usually they like you know the middle of the ship this may go up if so a lot of times it changes and then the fun part is you get to go in and pick your rooms also and then you click next and then you put the information. So it doesn't include taxes and fees until you get to the end. Um, you can add the travel protection. You can add the gratuities. Um, 
you know, and then go ahead and click next. So anyway, it's a lot of fun to play around and learn these different things and compare. But like I said, you can call them direct and ask them up front to, you know, walk you through it and they'll do that for you. Okay. Um, what else did we want to, um, VAX. So you guys all got into VAX. You know all about VAX and everything. Does anybody have any questions while we're here? Because Hi, Marnie. Hi. Marnie. <laughs> still Blanca. I'm still listening to you. Hi. You're so, so informative. I love your patience. Oh, um, <laughs> here I am trying to cook dinner. My husband's already <laughs> home, but that's okay. Uh, so, um, so downtown travel, uh, you know, I, I was given a couple quotes because I just did the Expedia tap a little while ago, but I know we don't really get commission on that because it's published. So I'm like, okay, um, I, I thought I was on Delta uh, vacations, but I don't think I logged into that. So I got to work on that. Uh, but downtown, I'm just, you know, for airfares, I just want to try to get, you know, better rates and at least be able to make some kind of commission, even if it's published, you know. Right. Something. What do you suggest? Um, now I haven't used, um, I haven't used downtown travel. Has anybody on here used downtown travel? Um, let me show you something why we're thinking of that. Um, anybody here use downtown travel? Um, but have you guys used Google flights? Um, Blanca, I'm gonna get somebody on to that that has used downtown travel because I'm yes, thank you. Get thank you me. some help. Thank um, you. Um let me get on my hello guys. Can somebody jump on my QA and help me with downtown travel? Okay. That's what we do is um help each other, okay? You know, it's a... Uh, it is a um, team effort, all right? And then I'm gonna go into the leaders group, Platinums, so we can ask them. Okay, there we go. They should have somebody jumping on. But have you guys gotten on here? Google Flights, okay? Where did they wanna go, Blanca? For, yes. your, um, so, for your flights. Yeah. For example, uh, Guadalajara to San Francisco nonstop, um, or uh, or to Oakland. I know it's Valaris, but that's really a really inexpensive. And for uh, when? Uh, let's say this was for the twentieth of September. Okay. So see here how it's how it's showing the rates. So if they went on the 21st, it's, you know, $19 cheaper or whatever. Um, but if they went on the 20th, okay, to what? Uh, actually, it's a one-way coming out here. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I don't know if here. Oh, there you go. One way. Okay. All right. So the 20th, 170. So let's see. It'll pull up and show you. So here, nonstop. Aero Mexico, it's a four mm -hmm. hour nonstop. Yes. Pretty good deal there. Mm -hmm. um, other I flights. think it, that's, that's without taxes, you assume, or? Um, taxes, let's see, huh? I think it's all included. Oh, okay. Um, usually, what I do when I do this, I just go mm -hmm. and book directly with the airline um, itself. Oh, there. Oh. So okay, there. I was thinking of doing that, but uh, how do I get a commission? Should I just tell her, you know, pay me a, a, service, a fee? service fee? How would you incorporate a service fee since that's um, something I was thinking about, just going directly to the carrier and then just say, okay, you know, $25 per ticket or $25 per book. You know, I don't want to push it too much, but at least get that clientele and then work from there with packages and whatnot. Okay. Hold on, because again, I don't charge any service fees, but we do have some that do. So mm -hmm. hold on. Yeah. Usually the um, the uh, travel train, like tomorrow, um, I should have some of the bookers on with me at 10 a.m. that are better at that part, okay? Okay, okay. Um, 
but again, hopefully they'll get on. I actually have, let me send it over. This is ways to make money on travel. I, I mean, on air only. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, here, Jenny's getting on. No, it's mine. Yes. Oh, shoot. You know what? OMG, I'm still on mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You know what? I forgot. Um, Q&A, I was supposed to be on um, the other link. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm trying to get used to my schedule, guys. I probably should tell them to get on that that Q and A. Huh? Uh, uh oh, wrong Zoom, Marnie. Uh oh, wrong Zoom. <laughs> hey guys, I'm so sorry. I forgot. I'm still on my Zoom. Can you let um anybody on the Q and A Zoom to let them know that I'm on mine? I don't have the sign on for the new Q and A. <laughs> Everybody wants you, Marnie. Courtney, are you on or no? No, Courtney said she's getting on to help me. But so what happened was, guys, just so you know, I signed up to just do a Q&A to help you guys. And, and again, you know, on my team. But then I'm like, you know, well, I'll open it up to anybody. And then uh, and then we thought, well, why don't we put Rising Tide and, and my, just add me to theirs? So I'm like, OK, I can do that. So I'm doing that on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, I think, or Monday, Wednesdays. But I forgot it's a different Zoom. Oh, sorry, I'm getting old. All right, so so they're getting on to help me. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, guys. Hey there, can you uh, tell the people on the regular q and I'm on mine, the 817 number. Okay. So let me show you though, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in here, air only, okay? Air only, hold on, select all, copy. So I'm gonna send this to you. All right, actually I'm on mine and I have 13 people on. All right, uh, Jenny, can you help Blanca with service fees and with um downtown travel or what you can help with again i don't expect you to be a, a pro at it do 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 jenny jenny can you hear what is it Jenny, Jenny, where can I turn to? Oh, Brandon's on here too. Brandon does service fees. Brandon? Yes, ma'am. Hi there. Hi. Can you explain how you do a service fee on an airfare only? Yeah, so if you wanna pull up your um, invoice example, you have one for your OCHO travels, right? Yes. If you wanna pull that up, that'd be a good um, visual but you would basically just write out the invoice um, using a, a software template. And then you just add a booking or a service fee onto the invoice whenever you send it out. Um, you can do, if you just tell your client like what the total is and then send them the um, credit card authorization form, you can also have them do that prior as well. But um, a detailed invoice is always good and you just wanna just add on your service or booking fee and just explain that to them that, you know, airlines don't pay commission directly like hotels and packages and things like that do. So when you book a package for someone, you're just doing the airfare complimentary for them. But whenever it's airfare only, um, that doesn't pay. So then a service fee is kind of wrapped into that. And most will understand that. Then you just invoice it separately and email it to them. And I'm then back. Is... Sorry about that, guys. My For some reason, it was saying my, my mic wasn't working. All right. Well, I went ahead and posted in the chat groups too, guys. So thank you, um, Jenny. Thank you, um, Emily. And thank you, Brandon, for jumping on. Um, air only. Here's some options on it. So again, I haven't used downtown travel. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys have, um, if it's worth it or if it's worth just going ahead and using your own 
um, you know, booking it and do a service fee. So what's your guys? Uh, Mar oh, oh, sorry, Marnie, if you want, you can make me uh, co-host real quick. I'll share my screen. I'll show you guys how to do it on uh, downtown travel, how to, order, um, how to add a service fees okay, real quick perfect. and easy. There you go. And I'll stop sharing. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. You're welcome. Yes, you guys are gonna love. It. I mean, honestly, I met Bill from Downtown Travel, and he was he was awesome. He was great. And then you know, it's so easy to. Um, I'm trying to think. What the heck is this? This this is. I think I think this is it. I am. I have to go to the Travel Cafe. One second, guys. All right. For registration uh, for downtown travel, it's so quick. And I mean, it's, it's pretty quick and easy. You just want to follow the exact directions that they give you in a travel cafe. Sorry, my computer's slow. I have all these things open. Let me log out of some of this stuff. Emily, make sure you let them know about the 1099 too. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, just go to regular suppliers, how to register. Scroll down to D, or I could have searched downtown travel too, either one. There we go. Okay, this is the website. If I click this. So it's, um, okay, so it's uh, the best agent pro. You have to make sure, okay, let me log on and I'll show you guys because it's a little bit tricky to sign up. Um, but let me log out for a second so I can show you guys about the sign up process. Uh, register an account. Okay. When you register an account, you have to register as an agency. Okay. You could put your email here, your password, your company name here. The only time you, um, you're you going to put Archers is going to be right here. I'm an affiliated, I'm affiliated with a consortium. And then you're going to see Archer Travel. Okay. So just make sure you register as an agency, not as an agent and not as a consortium. Uh, let me get out of here, sign in. And then for flights, for example, um, let me go. Okay, so the, it's gonna bring you right straight into the, to the flight portal. Okay, so let's say for, I'm in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Let's say I'm traveling to, I don't know, New York. 